Okay, let's take a look at few pictures here. Here is the first one. What do you notice? Looks like a photograph of a distant desert, right? You can spot a few trees out there, some land stretching across. But wait, do you see this part in the middle? Looks like water, doesn't it? Or maybe it's the sky. But yeah, it really looks like uh, water right here. Is this water? Let me show you another one. Here again, similar vibe, wide shot of a road, almost desert-like surroundings. And once more, do you notice these patches that look like water? Right here. Is this actually water? Because look closely, you can clearly see reflections of the sky. And if you go back to the first picture too, you can even spot a faint reflection of the tree there. Now, let me show you one more. This one makes it super clear. Look at this. You can see the reflection of the cyclist right there. The car or maybe it's a truck. You can see the reflection too. In fact, the whole lower part looks like it's covered with reflection. That's what convinces us there must be water here. So the big question, is there really water? The surprising answer, no. There is no water here. Not in this one, not in this one, not in this one either. So now you might be wondering, Don, what am I actually seeing then? Well, it's not water. It's actually an optical illusion, something that tricks our brain to believing water is present. And it has a name, it's called Mirage. Now, in this video, we are going to break down the science, the physics behind a Mirage. But before we dive into that, uh, let's do a quick recap of something you have already studied before. Remember total internal reflection? Let's revisit that. So what was total internal reflection again? Picture this, you have a denser medium, say water. Water is definitely denser compared to air, right? Yes. Now, when light travels from water into the air, that is from a denser medium to a rarer medium, what happens? Refraction, right? And then we have studied earlier that at certain angles of incidence, especially when the angle is greater than a special angle we call the critical angle, something unusual happens. Instead of passing into the air from the water, the light just reflects back or so bounces back into the same medium following the usual laws of reflection. That's what we call the total internal reflection. Okay, great. Now you may ask, what does all this, all this have to do with the mirage? I don't see two different mediums stacked together. All I see is just water. So then what's going on? Why bring up total internal reflection here? Well, the secret lies in how light bends or refracts when it passes through different layers of air. Air layers, different mediums, what are we talking about exactly? Okay, let me, let's think of a hot sunny day. On a day like that, the air just above the ground, right here, gets really heated up. And when the air gets heated, it becomes hot and thin. In another words, we say it's, it has become optically rarer. Now, if you go a little higher up from the ground, the air is cooler and the cooler air is denser. So this layer above is cooler and denser and as you go even further up, it gets cooler, cooler, cooler and denser still. So basically, if we move upward from the road surface, the air is layered, continuous layer, right next to the ground, hot, thin, rarer air, higher up, cooler, denser air. And here is the key point. The refractive index also increases with density, right? Refractive index at the top layer is higher compared to the refractive index at the bottom layers, right? At the bottom, the refractive index is low and at higher, the refractive and higher, higher up above, the refractive index is higher. And remember what happens when light moves from medium of different refractive indexes? It bends. It's called refraction, right? Now, imagine rays of light coming down from the sky or from some distant tree passing through these layers. Instead of going straight, the rays keep bending gradually curving downward, right? Let's visualize this with a tree. Here is the tree and here is our observer standing some distance away. Now, how do light rays travel from tree to the observer? Well, as they move from the denser air above into the thinner, hotter air near the ground, they bend away from normal at each layer. So instead of going in a straight line, the rays curve, curve, curve. And when it is close to the ground, the angle of incidence becomes larger than the critical angle. What happens then? Total internal reflection. Light just bounces back. It reflects upward, traveling back into the cooler layers and finally reaching the observer's eye. 
Now here is the fun part. Our brain always assumes light travels in straight line. So when these curved rays reach the eye, the brain extends them backward in a straight path. And what does it see? It sees the light as if it's coming from the ground. That's why observer sees what looks like a reflection of the tree on the road. And when we see reflection on the ground, what does our brain instantly believe? That there is water there. That's the trick of the mirage.